going to look at sex link traits and how to do Punnett squares when we're dealing with a gene that's on the X or Y chromosome. Because we do have genes, like it not only does it make us male and female um, genetically, but it also, they have traits on there. So we're gonna look at how that works and uh, it's a little bit of background information. Sex link traits are those whose genes are found on the X chromosome but not on the Y chromosome. So you have to ask yourself, who has the Y chromosome? Do males have it or do females have it? So males, and maybe you've heard before, males have XY. They have an XY for their two chromosomes and females have XX. So here's what happens there is that if, let's say there's a disease that is recessive, I could have the recessive trait and not show it because I have XX. So to kind of explain that right here, if this is me as a female, uh, let's say I have this recessive gene on my X chromosome, but I have the dominant, so I'm okay. I don't have the, Z, the disease, but if a boy has that, he has the disease. He has no other X to help out. So this is why sometimes there are diseases out there that are more male dominant than female. All right. So continuing on here on the second sentence. In humans, the X chromosomes are much larger than the Y chromosomes and contains thousands of more genes than the Y chromosome. For each of the genes that are exclusively on the X chromosomes, females who are XX would obviously have two alleles. Males who are XY would only have only the one allele like I just showed you. Thus, females with one recessive allele and one dominant allele for a gene that is unique to the X chromosome will always display the dominant phenotype. However, a male with a recessive allele for a gene unique to the X chromosome will always exhibit that recessive trait because there is no other corresponding allele on the Y chromosome. So what I just showed you, they're basically saying it in words. In humans, each of the two different sex-linked genes has a defective recessive allele that causes a disease. The diseases are hemophilia, which just means if I were to bump into something, um, I might, instead of just bruise, a normal bruise, I could bleed to death from under my skin. Or if I cut myself open, I could bleed to death. I don't clot. Um, and color blindness. In hemophilia, the defective allele presents the synthesis of a factor needed for blood clotting. In color blindness, the defective allele prevents a person from seeing certain colors. Obviously, one is worse than the other. So here is some information below, and we're gonna use this to help answer questions. So if you look at this, as soon as I see XX, that's a chromosome, or I'm sorry, the capital X, capital H, that's a chromosome with a normal dominant allele, so you do not have the disease. Here, if you have an X with a lowercase h, that has the recessive hemophilia allele, and you might have it. A Y chromosome, that's only your boys, and it does not have a gene for hemophilia. There is not one there. Um, an X with a B, that is normal dominant allele. You are not colorblind. If you have an X with a lowercase b, then you have that recessive allele and you could be colorblind. And then a Y, once again, the Y is just for the boys and it does not contain a gene for colorblindness. So knowing that, I'm gonna walk through number one with you guys and how to fill this out. So we're gonna write the genotypes, which remember, genotypes means letters. For the following phenotypes, which is your physical, what I think of, of red-green color blindness. So if I am a male, the first thing I'm gonna do before I even look at this normal scenario, if I'm a male, I'm automatically gonna put X, Y. Okay, once I get that, then I can look at, am I colorblind or not? And they are not, they are not colorblind. So if you look up here at the top, that is a capital B. So that would be a male that is not colorblind. Now B, a normal female. So before I do anything, I'm going to do a female. I'm gonna put XX, because that's a female. Now I'm gonna deal with the little letters up above. They're not colorblind, but they are homozygous. Remember that this means same. So if you're not colorblind, you have a capital B, and they're telling you that you are homozygous for that, so two capital Bs. All right, C is a male, so right away I'm going to do the XY. Now we know like the Y, just the Y has nothing there. It does not have the colorblind allele on there. 
But if you're colorblind, then you have that lowercase b, that recessive trait. D, normal female. So as soon as I see female, I'm going to do this. Now, as soon as I hear normal, I know there is a capital B. But it says right here that she is carrying the color one, but it's heterozygous. She's carrying that trait, so it's that. She is normal because she has that dominant trait, that capital B, but she is not colorblind. Now, this is why you could, I could be, have the colorblind trait and not know it. I see every color perfectly fine, but I'm carrying that trait. Now, maybe I give it to my son. I don't even know that I have it, but maybe I could give it to him. Um, I, and that could be a possibility for me or for any female out there. Um, a colorblind female. So if I'm a colorblind female, if I'm a female, I'm XX. If you're colorblind, you have to be two lowercase b's, right? As soon as I have that capital B, I'm not colorblind. So it's got to be two lowercase b's. All right. So let's go on up and look at number two. I'm going to do one of these with you, and then I'm going to kind of send you guys off on your own and see how you do. So what proportion slash percent of the male children are colorblind if these are my two parents? So look at this. Here is my female. Here is my male, right? Because it's XX, and then we have the XY. So when I do this, you have to do this. You have to put XB. You have to put the Xs up there, and you have to put the Y. All right, so look at this. This will be a girl. Girl, I'm not gonna do the Bs yet, I will in a second. Here is my boy, here is my boy. And this is why we know it's a 50-50% chance that you will have a girl or a boy. Now you may have a boy, you may have five boys in a row, but you still, it's that 50-50% chance every time you have a child, and that is why. This is also why it is up to the dad if you're going to have a boy or a girl. Look what mom gives. Mom can only give an X. It is dad who decides, are you going to be a girl or are you going to be a boy? It depends on the sperm that meets with the egg. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to bring these Bs down. I've got a capital B, lowercase, capital, lowercase, capital, the Y has nothing on it, and capital, the Y has nothing on it. So what proportion slash percent of the male children are colorblind? So I'm looking at just the male children, just these two right here. And there's 0% chance that you will have a colorblind male. Now what proportion slash percent of the female children are colorblind? So I'm going to look at just my females, which are right here, and that is also 0%. Now here's the kicker. If there is a boy out there that is colorblind, if you have a daughter, your daughter will at least carry the gene. Look what dad has given. That is all dad was able to give to his daughters. So if there's a male out there that is colorblind, your daughter is at least a carrier. And then if mom happens to give a trait, um, then the daughter will be colorblind. But you can see where it's a lot easier for the boys to get that. All right. So then I'm going to let you guys do number three. I'm not going to talk too much about it. Let you guys try out number three. And then let's look at number four. Number four says, what is the probability that a colorblind woman who marries a man with a normal vision will have a colorblind child? All right, so first I need to fill in my parents. Okay, I'm going to do mom, and I'm going to do dad. So let's see what's going on here. It's a colorblind woman. So in order for a colorblind woman, it's got to be two lowercase b's, right? If I did this, well, that makes me normal, okay? And that's not the case. I'm colorblind, all right? And she marries a man with normal vision, so that means he has to be that. There's nothing on the Y. If it's, this is the only other option for a male, and that would be colorblind. Okay, so now I'm going to come and do like we did a second ago. I'm going to come and put these on my Punnett square. Now I want you to see what happens here. Even though dad is not colorblind, watch what happens. Dad, and it's not really saving, I'm gonna say dad saves the girls, it's not the end of the world if you're colorblind, but look, dad saves the girls. There's dad, he saves the girls, here's mom getting the girl the colorblind gene. Now look, you will have, look at this, the girls are fine. Now look at the boys though, mom, 
Mom gives them that colorblind gene and dad gave them the Y that has nothing on it. Mom gives that colorblind gene, dad gives the Y. That's why with some of these sex linked traits, it's usually the mother who passes it on. Now with colorblind, not that big of a deal, but there are some serious, serious genetic disorders out there that women do not know they have and then they pass it along to their child and they don't realize it until they, after they've given birth. So here's what happens. Um, they wanna know, uh, what is the probability that they will have a colorblind child? Well, these two for sure are gonna be colorblind, so there is a 50% chance that they will have a child that is colorblind and that child will be a male. The females will not be colorblind in that scenario at all. All right, so let's clear that out. So then I'm gonna have them in class. I'm gonna have them try to fill this out, the parents, and do this kind of square themselves. And then they're gonna do the ones for hemophilia. Now remember, back from this first page up here, we completed this, we showed hemophilia, what it is to be normal, a capital H. To have hemophilia, you have a lowercase h. So knowing that, we're going to fill, this, fill these charts out, these pennant squares, just like we did a second ago. And, and look at that. Um, so then after that, I want you guys to answer these following questions using the knowledge of what we just talked about, what we just did, what is a sex-linked trait, why must males inherit color blindness or hemophilia from their mothers, which I just discussed. And you can draw, if it helps you to, instead of just writing, you can draw out and show why. And then why is color blindness or hemophilia more common in males than in females? Once again, you can draw a Punnett square, you can draw something out to show me this, or you can just write it out, all right? If you guys have any questions at all, or if you're having any trouble even understanding this, please get a, uh, get a hold of me, get in contact with me, and I will try to um, get in touch with you and explain things a little bit better, okay? Let me know if you need anything. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.